Greenhouse was once a prolific forger. From ancient carvings to modern paintings, there was nothing he couldn't make. It's like putting in an old window. But a spell in prison convinced him to renounce his past. So he's teamed up with Oxford historian Dr. Yenina Ramirez. Oh my gosh! To rediscover the secrets of the ancients and to try to match their skills. As for me, I'm Valdemar Januszczak, and my job is to keep tabs on them. Janina has brought Sean to the Wallace Collection in London. It's a museum filled with famous paintings. But that's not what she wants to show him. Sean, great to be in the Wallace Collection, yes, isn't it? Yes, fantastic place. Well, known for its 18th century painting, but look at all these glorious curiosities. Great the ivories. Ivories. Ceramics. Ceramics, and, I mean, look at that. That's oh, yeah. incredible as a piece of ceramic, yeah, isn't it? Fantastic, isn't it? So it's a Palissy, um, French, uh, 16th century, possibly. Mm. Late. But late, yeah. If it's not by him, it's by someone following yeah. after him, because he was hugely influential. Yeah, he was. He? he had a lot of followers, yes, and a lot of copiers. Bernard Palissy was a maker of French Renaissance pottery. His plates, covered in realistic animals, vegetation <laughs> and snakes, are some of the most extraordinary ever made. It's definitely a life mould. A life mould. Yeah. So how would that happen then? You have, to, you have to kill the poor beast first of all and set it in, in a, a clay base and then take a plaster mould of it, make some plaster of Paris, pour it over it and then take the dead snake out and replace the snake with clay slip. Oh, it's a bit it's gory, gruesome, isn't it? Yeah, same with the fish. I think the fish is alive, casting the lizard. Really? And that's but why the they look so realistic. Crate, yes. But it's like a little sure. study in nature, isn't it? It is, yeah. Leaves, individual mm. leaves. And I'm taken Burns. with that frog up there, look. Yeah, beautiful, isn't it? Raising it's its head up. Yeah. An absolute kind of little miniature world, isn't it? Yes. How long do you think something like that would take to make? Uh, pro probably about a week, maybe. A so, week? A ceramics are pretty quick to make, yeah. <laughs> Once you've got the moulds, the moulds would probably take a week and then the making of the object about a week. There's only two firings in it. You could do this in a week? Yes, easily, yes. <laughs> easily, yeah. right. Yeah. OK, challenge. Yeah. I want to see one of these in a week. Right, you're on. <laughs> <laughs> better, get, better get busy. Yeah. <laughs> if he's going to make a palisi in a week, Sean needs to get cracking. So the next day in Bolton, he's up at dawn, sketching out his first ideas. I've been thinking about a design for it, and I've come up with this. So initially, it's uh, a stream running around an island, basically, and then a broad brim around the edge with the animals and creatures upon it. There'll be a grass snake, centre stage, a main snake, a small grass snake here, a few small common frogs dotted about, and two European green lizards. I'll just draw them in faintly first so I get the proportions right so I don't have to use the rubber on them. I'll draw the legs. A lot of people always get their legs the wrong way around on, on reptiles. I'll get the tail in there. Long curving tail. We're going to put a frog in here, been eaten by the snake, so we'll put him in, put him in here, just a small frog. Lunch for the, uh, the grass snake, possibly. I think that's it. I've got to put two fish in now. A roach in first here, so we get a bit of movement around the plate that we've got with the lizards and the frogs. I think that's about it. Having planned his plate, Sean sets off to find out what Palisi's beasties really looked like. He's come to a local nature reserve, the Rixton Clay Pits, in the hope of spotting some reptiles. Hi, Mike. Hi, Sean. How are you doing? OK. Well, I believe you want to see some lizards and newts? Yes, please, lead on. OK, follow me. So, Mike, do you have any grass snakes here? 
no, actually, no, we, we don't. It's quite surprising. No, the habitat's perfect for them. When we were kids, there were loads of them, wasn't there? But they seem to have died away. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, the, thing is, the reason I'm, here, I'm making a copy of a Bernard Palisi plate, the French guy from the like, 16th century, Henry VIII's yeah. time, was with the first. And I'm just, so I want to look at some reptiles, grass snakes and stuff, because he, he featured all these kind of things on them. Oh, he actually see. killed the actual creatures, took plaster moulds of the bodies, right. and then cast them and put them on these ceramics. So that's why I'm here to have a look at stuff. But I believe you've got a lot of newts here, haven't you? Yeah, we, we do. Good place um, for news. Yeah, Richard Clay Pits is uh, it's one of the top sites in the country for the, uh, the protected Great Crested Newt. Excellent. I'm looking forward to seeing them. Hopefully we can find some for you. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you, you never know with nature, do you? You can't no, you don't. choreograph it. <laughs> yeah, so I guess the name of the game now is just being patient. Yes. If something swims by. Walk further up, see if we can see anything. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's something dash away there. Mm -hmm. I suppose Palace didn't have this trouble in his time. No, I expect you'd have a lot more French to go up. Yeah. yeah, the French countryside would be teeming yeah, with it, wouldn't yeah, it? Well, it would have been full back of them, yeah. Back in yeah. the 1500s. Yeah. Shame you're not doing damselflies, isn't it? Yeah, so they're they're knocking they're, about today. Yeah, they're knocking about, yeah. aren't they? Back in Oxford, Dr. Yanina Ramirez has been in the library investigating the man who made the animal pots. Bernard Palisi was probably born around 1510. And he spent most of his life in and around France, particularly around Paris. And the story goes that when he was a boy, he saw a piece of porcelain, and this porcelain just fascinated him. Palissy was so obsessed with creating beautiful porcelain that he actually drove his family into poverty. There's a story that he broke up the furniture, pulled up the floorboards in his house so that he could fire his kiln and continue his experiments. Eventually, he was recognised for what he'd developed, which was a different form of pottery, known as palissy ware. And usually, uh, the ones that survive are platters. And on the surface are creatures that are made from life casts, it seems. Well, death casts. <laughs> creatures like snakes, lizards, that he has moulded from them. Um, and he was also fascinated by the sciences. He was one of the first people to have realised that fossils were, in fact, dead creatures from the past. He thought they were the result of the biblical flood. What's also fascinating is that he was a Huguenot, a Protestant, in Catholic France. And his religious beliefs, I think, had a profound effect on the artworks that he's left behind. Because, on the one hand, as a Protestant, he's not creating the sorts of religious iconography that we'd usually see at this time. So he's not making images of the Madonna and the saints. Instead, he's creating beautiful visualizations of God's creation. But there's also something dark and prophetic about the works because there's a sense in which, if you imagine these platters laden with fruit, with food, as you work your way through all the, the glorious, delicious flavors, at the bottom will be this reminder of the earthly nature of, of, of our existence. And actually, it's the darker creatures, the snakes, the lizards, the spiders, all those creatures that, that in art are traditionally associated with the negative, and indeed, even the, the hellish, the devil. They remind you that there is another aspect to existence. It's almost like a memento mori. Watch your behavior, watch your soul. With the countryside in Lancashire supplying so little in the way of real wildlife, Sean has come to the Bolton Museum in the hope of sourcing some alternatives. Well, this is the place, Bolton Museum. I haven't been here for a while. I'm with a bit of trepidation. 
bit of fear, the nerves are jangling a bit, so here we go, I think. He's anxious because an Egyptian statue from his forgery days was acquired by the museum and is now on show as a fake. But with those days behind him, he pops into the natural history section and then into the museum shop where he cleans them out of rubber snakes. The next day, Yanina arrives in Bolton to check on Sean's progress. He said he could make a palisi in a week. So how's he doing? Hey, Sean. Good oh, to okay. be back in Bolton. Yeah, yeah, nice to see you again. Yeah, back in. Oh, my goodness. So well, this since I saw is you what the you've Wallace been working on. <gasps> in the Wallace collection, this is kind of what I've come up with. Kind oh. of a police design. Ah, oh, you've done so well. This looks amazing. And it's very similar to the one we saw in the Wallace, isn't it? Where yes. the, the snake was on a sort of a rock in the centre. Yeah, on the island with the water going around it. A couple of fish, a little pike, uh -huh. a roach. Yeah, because we saw a pike, didn't we? Was it a yeah. pike on the other one? Yes, it was, it was wasn't yes, it? Yes. And you've got the frogs in. Mm -hmm. So the seashells. Is it going to be this size? Approximately, yes. It, it may not turn out exactly like that, but something like that. OK. And it's going to have that same motion as well. I love that, the idea yeah, they're swimming yeah. around. Yeah, if you look at the genuine palaces, they always have everything going around, so it kind of gives a, a sense of movement, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is going to be beautiful. Very hard to do, but beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to see it. What I have to do now is go and find the clay. Oh, OK. Right, I'm going to demonstrate how Polisi would have dug his own clay because it wasn't commercially available. This is just on a tiny scale. So you kind of have to imagine these buckets as brick ponds. I'll pick some raw clay for starters. I think it's all plant debris in it and pebbles and stones, so we'll dump that in there. I think that's actually enough to be going on with for starters. You see just in the bucket. We'll get some water without slipping in, that's the, that's the trick of it. That there. It's full of plant debris. Stuff that's fallen in over centuries and even millions of years. Stones and grit that will just blow up in the kiln. If we use it directly, so we'll just get... Like, we have to chop up the clay in the bottom of the... and turn it into a, a, a slurry in effect rather than a large lump in water. Soup, clay soup, if you like. To get my hands in now, I'm afraid. And you can see all the debris in it, all the... Bits of detritus, the plant. You feel all the grit in the stones as you squeeze it through your hand. There's thousands and thousands of them. So you would never be able to separate it without using the water. Right now, I've virtually turned it all into a fine slurry. There's a few pieces in the bottom that they'll be drained away. And the trick is to agitate it, bring all the detritus from the top, and then leave it and let it settle for five minutes. The top part will be skimmed with a net, a fine mesh net. You can see all the plant debris on the surface. Well, that would be taken off. More professional than I'm doing at the moment. And all the stones and the grit will go to the bottom. So then what we want is the stuff in the middle, the actual clay slurry. So, and gently, we pour the slurry off the top, making sure we leave all the detritus and the heavy stuff on the bottom, the grit and the stones. This will be running through a sluice in, in a brick pond, if you imagine it, on a big scale. All the rough stuff in the bottom, all the grit and the stones, you feel it's full of grit and stones. You can hear it on the bottom of the tin. Now we'll get rid of this. Imagine it's been a clean pond. The next pond along, they had about five ponds in total, settling ponds they called them. Now you leave that for a while to settle, so the finer debris will be going to the bottom now. And after, say, an hour of settling, you would open the sluice and run it into the next pond, which is like the next bucket, gently, so we don't disturb the detritus off the bottom. You do that five times. So if you start it with five tonnes of clay, you'd end up with one tonne of good clay at the end of it, roughly. 
through five processes. Right, that, that's a demonstration done. Now I have to get on with making enough clay to make the policy plate, so it's back to work. The next morning, back in the workshop, Sean is ready to start his plate. OK, I've got the rubber animals and now we're going to make the moulds. So we'll start with this one. Right, the first process is kind of back to school to make a, an edging just to contain the plaster around the actual snake so we can take the mould for it. So just bear with me while I get this sorted. I should press the hole down so we don't get any, any leaks at the last minute. I'm running around panicking. Right, that's more or less it. It's ready for the plaster now. OK, so, so I have to mix the plaster. It's always a messy process. Always best to use a hand. You can kind of feel the consistency. Right, we'll have to pour it now because it goes off rather rapidly, the plaster of Paris. I've got all the lumps out of it. Just give it a tap to get up. most of it. You can see the bubbles come to the surface now. Just getting the air out of it now, you see. Right, I'll fill the mould now. And I think that's a pretty good guess. Right, we'll leave these to set for a while now. We'll flash off and we can get on with other jobs. Right. See, the mould is dry now, so... We'll strip it first of all. Take the clay away and get at it. Right now. There's a snake embedded in the plaster. We'll have to kind of give, give that a bit of a bash. There we are. Right, the snake's out now, ready to go. So the first thing to do is to roll out the clay. Now we've got to get, press it in to get all the scale patterns and the detail. So just plunk it into the front end here, start to press. Now that's more or less, I think we've more or less got what we want there. Right, now I've got some cat gut here. I'm going to trim this as a, a trimming wire, so I'll put it down onto the plaster, hold it as tightly as we can. Now we'll take this off. We can see the exact pattern of the snake. Right, now, got to get the snake out now. Watch the body snapping, it's all a bit fiddly. Looks flexible enough, but stiff enough. And the head is always a difficult part, usually, but we'll see how he goes. Ah, oh, got in there. I have to flip it over rather briskly. There we have him. There's some work to do under the jawline here. There's a little work to do on his head, not to undercut it here, and especially on this side, it's a bit deep, because his head's going to be propped up till he dries, so it looks like he's on the hunt. Something like that. Having made the snake, Sean fast forwards through all the other animals on the plate. And by the end of the afternoon, He's ready to put his palisi together. Right, this is the actual plates for the palisi, the blank as we'd call it. Pre-made this and I've made all the bits of snakes, the lizards and whatever to go on. He starts by modelling the plate itself, putting in the island and the rushing stream that surrounds it. I've made all kinds of ceramics from all, all periods. I mean. Russian desk furniture from the Russian constructivists like of the early 20th century, right back to Chinese stuff. With the island and the stream finished, it's time to bring in the hungry snake. And then the unfortunate fish. Underneath, he's cut out the clay in the shape of the snake. A palisi trick that helps with the firing. The lizards go on the rim. And finally, a little gang of frogs is scattered about the riverbank. And the pretend palisi 
is ready for its first firing. I just hope it doesn't explode in the kiln. That's all I can do with it now and just, just hope. Close the kiln lid. Turn the safety handle in. No, it's firing. Sean's been at it for a couple of weeks now. And with the firing done, Yanina comes up to Bolton to check the results. Hey, Sean. Hi, Yanina. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Well, this is it. Look at this. Oh, you are clever. This is beautiful. I can't get over the detail. Look at the snake's face. It looks so lifelike. You've added another snake in yeah, as well. Just, just eating a frog as well as his back <laughs> sticking out of his mouth, so... A couple, <laughs> little bit of amusement on it. It's... Oh, it's better than I could have imagined. It's ready for glazing, though, so... Just to paint the glazes on, back in the kiln. Yeah. And that'll be it. So the glaze will seal them all in yes, as well? Yes, th these are the test firings I did. Ah, and what I am it. pleased with is that the, the large snake, the scale back in the grey, a couple yeah. of white patches on the back of his head, and then the rest in grey, darker to the tail, lighter to the... Oh, yeah, that's going to come up mm. beautifully, So the scales it? up nicer, doesn't it? Well, that's it, isn't it? You mm. can see each individual scale. Mm. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah, with the translucent glazes and the turquoise... That one. Oh, these are this stunning. is for the water. Again, it's got depth in it. It looks like mm. water, the way that the glaze has run into the ridges. Yes, yeah. You get it's got water-like quality, hasn't it? Has, it has, yeah. That's quite palissy like as well. The, it the is. The well, and it's very roughly hewn as well. You can see thumbprints and you ah, see the cutaway ah, in the background. Ah. It's all very, very, like I said, very rustic. Yeah. That's in his style, so I've tried to imitate the style. And you can listen, it's not cracked. Rings like a bell. Fantastic. So there's no, no fractures anywhere within it, so it's, it's come out well. I'm pleased with it, actually. Oh, I just can't wait to see it. With just the glazing to do, Sean is now ready for his final push. Right, I've put the uh, colouring oxides on, just a Palisi wood, and now I've got to seal it with a top coat of clear glaze. It all looks rather slapdash and rough at the moment, but once the glazes are coloured and the, the colour develops in the glazes, you'll see that as it's meant to be. That's what's difficult about pottery. When you're painting with pottery, you've kind of got a, a better imagination than you have with painting because the colours that you see being put onto the actual object are nothing like what they come out as. They're absolutely, completely transformed. So it does take a, a bigger imagination to be a good potter than to be a good painter, I think. The glazes I'm putting on are basically ground glass with other, other additives to stop them shrinking and cracking the glaze. So uh, this is an alkaline glaze, actually. Palissy would have used heavily leaded glazes, but they're so toxic that I'm not prepared to use them. I have used them in the past with fakes, and because it's very important with the fake that it is what it is, it has to be the materials, but with this being a demonstration, I'm using alkaline glazes, which aren't toxic at all. They're slightly less glassy and Slightly less rich, but you can hardly tell the difference. Right. That's a finished plate. So I've got to put it into the kiln, but it's glazed on the back so, so it doesn't stick to the shelf. I've got to prop it on these little stilts. They're just made out of the same clay and fired and just stand on, and then they'll be broken off when we get it out of the kiln later. So, standard practice. So we'll get it into the kiln now. Take the stilts first and put them in place. Kill them up. Policy wouldn't have had a kiln like this. He'd have, he'd have killed for a plate like this, I should imagine. Good kiln, but he had to work with what he had. It's quite a crucial. It is important they're just in the right spot, so I'll have to fiddle about a little bit to get these. This place I've made is a, a little bit rounder than palaces. Palaces were mainly a long oval, but I've made this to fit the kiln and get the biggest size out of the kiln that I can possibly get, so it's a little bit rounder than palaces, but it's all made in the same manner. Make sure it's quite secure. We don't want it moving in the actual firing. 
It's ready now, it's well balanced, so it's ready for putting on now. I'll shut the kiln and fire it. The next time we see it, it'll be transformed, hopefully. <laughs> we'll get a good firing. There we have it. A few days later, down in London, in the Wallace collection, Yanina is waiting to see what's come out of Sean's kiln once the firing has worked its magic. She knows it'll be different, but how different? Really looking forward to seeing Sean's version of a policy plate. Now, he seemed to think he could do it in a week, which I thought was being a little bit ambitious. It's a complicated thing to make, but just want to see how he's executed those animals, how he's come up with the glazes. Really can't wait. Sean, you've brought me a police plate. Yeah. <laughs> How has this one been to make? Uh, the modelling was good, but the glazing had a bit of trouble with it. Yeah, the glazing was always going to be tricky, wasn't it? Yeah, to try and get those combinations. To match the colour, yeah, but the, the modelling is fairly good. I'm intrigued about how long it ended up taking you because there was talk of it being yeah, knocked up in a week. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would be possible if we're just making the one item, but it took me about three weeks in the end. Three weeks? Yeah. That's still very good, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> the only thing I'm not pleased with is the animals because they're fake animals, so they're not quite as realistic. But we didn't want to kill anything for just for a plate. Anyway, so. No, no animals harmed in the making of this Absolutely. plate. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good slogan. Yeah. So, here we go. Can't wait to see it. Oh, wow! Yeah. That is magnificent. Oh, my goodness. Just zings. Mm. Oh, I love the way you've done the water. Yeah, that, that's more typical of Palace than we see here. Uh-huh. Like more turquoise, copper turquoise glaze. Yeah. And, and how about the finish? So what sort of processes did you have well, to do to get it's that? It's an alkaline glaze, whereas Palace used lead, but they're very toxic. You can't really use them today. So it's an alkali glaze. Yeah. I can't get over the realism of the creatures. That snake yeah. is fantastic. I put that little snake just eating a frog and you see back legs sticking uh, Oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see the back yeah. as well. Oh, yeah, yes. Course. So that was to help it with the firing. Yeah, so if it, it would have been too thick if it had been solid there, so it would have probably cracked along that line anyway, so mm. if you could cut that away. Yeah. You see a little firing marks where we propped oh, up on yes. the There's no footering, so you've got to prop them up and put your hand on them a bit sharp. Ah, but that's what we were looking for in the originals as well, wasn't it? As yeah, evidence yeah, you of don't see it on the Victorian fakes because they used uh, asbestos props. Right. And then they come away, they just leave like a little dusty surface. So, yeah. But in terms of the colours, I think you've got... I mean, that's a great collection and I love this turquoise for the yeah, water. that's more typical of Palissy rather than these. It's like copper blue, so... Yeah, yeah, slightly brighter palette all yeah, round, isn't it? It is, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, they do vary, though. Those dark ones, very light ones. Well, I think it's it's absolutely gorgeous. And it's mm. got, it's just so lovely to touch. The textures mm. are amazing. Yeah. Sean, it is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Good. But the trouble with this art business, there's always more to do. Absolutely. Let's get on and do okay. some more. <laughs> Back to work. <laughs> 